In this class we're going to consider measuring business performance. So matching opportunities and appropriate strategic competencies is the passport to success. Looking at opportunities and looking at what the business can do best, it's strategic competencies, what it can do best. Matching those two is the way to succeed. Good management will follow the competencies and strategies to ensure a good outcome. So good management must be aware of what the business can do best and attempt to match what it can do best with the requirements of the market. And that's the recipe for success. Management rely on good and accurate information to monitor and measure performance. There are three important measures of performance. The first one is economy, which is economics. The next is efficiency, which really could also be treated as economics. And the third one is effectiveness, which, surprise, surprise, could also be treated as economics. However, the first one suggests economics more directly. The first one is economy, and this is one of the important measures of performance. So let's look at economy. It refers to minimizing costs and maximizing margins. Well, that might be a little extreme. What it may be interested in doing is reducing costs and increasing margins. Uh, minimizing and maximizing are strong words and have got mathematical undertones. However, if we stick with the language for the moment, an effort to reduce costs and maximize margins will result or could result in lower prices or a higher margin. The business has an option. It, it may reduce the prices because it's more efficient or it could simply take a higher profit margin because it has reduced costs. At the same price it have uh, higher margins. Now there are two advantages of cost efficiency. Customers may be price conscious. The managers must balance quality and price. So customers may be price conscious but it doesn't mean that uh, cutting price is necessarily a good thing. It may uh, brand the market as a cheap product and hence undesirable, not fashionable. So there are marketing implications for the pricing strategy. Competitive pressure in the marketplace may require the business to cut costs and reduce price. Generally speaking, businesses do not operate in isolation. Many businesses have competitors. Most businesses have competitors. And even if there are not competitors right now, there are potential competitors that need to be taken into account. Now the sources of cost efficiency, well, the supply costs, these are certainly a, a factor in determining costs. Uh, they impact on the organization on the organization's overall cost position. Um, location influences um, supply costs. Where, uh, where the business is located? Do the raw materials have to come from the other side of the world? or um, What's the communication systems? Can it be delivered easily by rail? Or does it require specialist transport to bring it there? So the location is an aspect of supply cost, as is the relationship with suppliers. Uh, suppliers may see the business as unreliable or not necessarily a good pair and um, therefore it has a bad relationship and uh, its supplies to the business may be coloured by the way it sees the business. And sometimes organisations act as intermediaries. They they buy the product to sell on 
to other companies a bit like um, wholesaling at the retail end um, sometimes companies buy in raw materials and hold raw materials and sell them on they become brokers in the materials another part of the cost efficiency uh, point is, is the product and process design um, the capacity and is the capacity full is, is the business working at full capacity if it is there are there is no scope for cost reductions it, it can't make efficiencies it can't develop more efficient ways because the the business is already running at capacity so it may not have the the space available to buy in new equipment it may not have the facility to expand the business in a more efficient way labor productivity may be at maximum as well so the opportunity to make further economies in labor and labor productivity may be restricted and the working capital as I said might be fully utilized in which case uh, there is little cost savings that can be made it can't it can't bring in unused spare capacity because perhaps there isn't any and the distribution and after sales the, the value chain um, idea well there might be some capacity for some savings in terms of distribution or um, warehousing there may be some but it needs to be looked at and areas where there is efficiency need to be identified the experience of the business well um, provides competitive advantage uh, as the amount of experience gained by an organization contributes to its effective unit cost the more experienced the business is the the more efficient it can become it is aware of efficiencies it's aware of quick ways of doing the task it has knowledge by learning by doing an organization has the ability to be effective over time as they learn to be more efficient when undertaking activities they have the ability to develop core competencies they learn by doing the experience of the business is important and the last point which came up on the screen there is the economies of scale and economies of scale is very important this is an important source of cost advantage particularly within the manufacturing organizations economies of scale occurs when cost per unit reduces as output increases in other words as the business grows the average cost of production falls now that's, knowing, uh, that's known as an economy of scale let's look at economies of scale in, in more detail it is an important topic first of all an organization can offer its customers value for money by providing lower costs therefore increasing its market its share of the market and gaining competitive advantage so a business that is expanding increasing its share of the market and gaining competitive advantage will also perhaps lower experience lower costs now it may experience lower costs for a variety of reasons uh, a business can decide to maintain its current prices on products and accept a higher profit margin if its costs are fallen falling um, or it may be that it wishes to cut the price and further expand the market and perhaps cut out competitors take an example of economies of scale let's say we have production and two possibilities we produce 300 items or 600 items let's say the cost of production is 20 pounds or 15 pounds now why it goes down to 15 pounds I'll discuss in a second but just for a moment let's just take it as the cost is 20 pounds if we produce 300 and 
15 pounds we produce 600. So the total production costs will be those two figures multiplied. 300 by 20 is 6,000 and 600 times 15 is 9,000. Now if the selling price is let's say 30 then the profit margin is the red figure which is 3,000 at uh, 300 units produced and 9,000 at 600 produced. In other words we double the production and we triple the profit margin. Doubling the production triples the profit margin. It goes from 3,000 to 9,000 whereas production only went from 300 to 600. Um, how can that be? Well, economies of scale come, around, come about because of economies of size. So as a business expands, it'll find it cheaper to produce. It'll have, first of all, technical economies. It may buy in specialist machines. It may have machines customized to do its particular tasks. It may introduce robotics. It'll have a more specialized research and development team, not just looking at the design of the product, making it more attractive in the marketplace, but perhaps looking at the production process also. It'll have specialist workers with specialist knowledge of the market, specialist marketing personnel, specialist uh, financial people, all of whom can start to reduce costs. It can also negotiate, because it's bigger, the business is growing bigger, it can negotiate better discounts on its purchases. It'll get loans easier from the bank and at cheaper rates because it's big and reputable. Um, so there are many aspects of a business. You can look these up on, online. There are many points which contribute to economies of scale. But there are many aspects to the business which will lead to a reduction in unit costs. So as businesses expand, their costs may fall. And that may lead to businesses growing. It's also the case, of course, businesses can get too big. After a certain point, uh, the business becomes too big, it becomes bureaucratic, uh, it needs extra managers, there's a loss of control over the business, communications channels become complicated, uh, the workers don't identify with the business. There are many issues that can creep in when the business gets too big. So when we consider economies of scale, we also need to consider possible diseconomies of scale. So it suggests that there must be an ideal size for businesses where economies of scale are maximized and just before diseconomies of scale set in. This is the topic of a separate video and I suggest you, you look at that. Now economies of scale, well internal and external economies of scale. So let's look at the internal ones. These are concerned with how the organization can lower its costs per unit in order to be more profitable and gain market share. So how it can lower its unit costs. And there are five main types of internal economies of scale an organization can consider. Bulk buying economies, as I said earlier on. Uh, the more it buys, the better its discounts. Technical economies, more specialized machinery, more customized machinery. Financial economies, uh, able to handle its accounts more effectively, being able to handle its debtors and creditors, um, being able to borrow from the bank more efficiently and at cheaper rates. Marketing economies, better presence in the market. Uh, the product is more widely known because the business is big, so it's better able to brand its product. Managerial economies. A manager may be able to supervise a bigger department because it has um, the, the department has better communications channels and it's better structured. So there might be efficiency gains in management. 
managers are able to look after bigger departments, have a wider span of control. There can also be dis, uh, uh, sorry, external economies. Uh, occur when, this occur when an organization receives the benefits from reduced unit costs as a result of the industry growing. Now these are outside of the business. These are advantages that are outside of the business. And there are three types of external economies of scale that need to be considered. First of all, it may be that the area is improving where the business is located, so there's better transportation and communications. That's a possibility. So that the distribution costs are falling and thus the unit cost of the product is falling. Industries sometimes influence the, the type of education in the area. For example, if it's a, a mining area, then the local colleges may offer mining courses for students. If the industry is shop, uh, sorry, shipbuilding, then the local colleges may offer shipbuilding courses or engineering courses that relate to shipbuilding. So there's a, a tooling up within the area to meet the requirements of the industry. And there's also support from other industries. Um, it's not just an industry growing in an area because the area is growing. The area may be growing because lots of other industries are coming in. But that's a good thing because now there's a, a, a workforce that are work orientated, uh, a more professional environment where industry is developing and um, the labour force is developing with it. Uh, there are skills to be shared and there's a, a subsidiary market perhaps in components um, that springs up. There may be suppliers and component suppliers that feed into the main industries who also can supply other industries. So the whole area is improving and that would be an external economy of scale. Now let's look at this idea of efficiency and effectiveness. There's, these are two methods used to evaluate whether a strategy is efficient and effective. First of all, let's look at the um, efficiency. This is concerned with optimizing the business resources to gain maximum returns on investment. So efficiency is optimizing resources, the business resources, to get the maximum returns. This either minimizes inputs for a given level of output or maximizes output for a given level of inputs. So either it maximizes output for a given level of input or it minimizes inputs for a given level of output. Factors that need to be considered when it comes to applying efficiency. Waste minimization for a given output minimize the waste. That's, that would lead to efficiency. Try to match production with demand so that stocks are not held. Minimize stock holding because stock holding is not productive. It's not doing anything. It's money tied into stock. Sometimes companies have to hold a certain amount of stock for contingencies or emergencies but don't overstock. Ways of increasing productivity and improving time management. There should always be the search for increasing productivity and improving time management. That would lead to efficiency. The quality of the product must be maintained however. It's essential that efficiency drives do not eat into the quality of the product. The quality of the product must be maintained. Now the effectiveness idea. Well, stakeholders' needs should be met. That's the first point. The stakeholder ranges from the shareholders 
to the workers, to the management, to the suppliers, to the distributors. So all of the people who are involved in the business may be seen as a stakeholder. And the needs of the stakeholders should be met. Resources should be efficiently allocated to satisfy stakeholder needs. So resources should be efficiently used to meet stakeholder needs. Effectiveness means achieving the set of objectives. So effectiveness is the ability of the business to meet the set of objectives. That's been effective. Now the objectives may include increasing output or sales. So meeting increasing output of sales means there is an effective plan, there is an effective management that's delivering the output or sales, the increase in output or sales. That's what we mean by effectiveness. Effectiveness is reducing costs if that isn't the objective of the business. Or effectiveness is embracing innovation or producing a good quality product that enjoys a good reputation in the market. If the business does that, it's been effective because perhaps that is one of the objectives of the business. Now there is an efficiency effective matrix. Uh, first of all, we'll just f fill out ineffective and effective on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis inefficient and efficient and the first box is uh, an inefficient and ineffective well if the business is both ineffective and inefficient it's likely to fail that's not going to be in business for a long time it's ineffective and inefficient if it's ineffective and efficient an efficient business that is not effective in meeting its objectives, it will decline. It's ineffective. It's not meeting its objectives. It's not effective. It's efficient, but it's not meeting its objectives. It's efficient in doing many things, but it's not meeting the objectives that are required, that are set. If it's effective and inefficient, um, then some of its objectives may survive, but it will have high costs. Um, so it may survive for some time, but if there is more uh, efficient competition in the market, it will, it will suffer. It's inefficient, so it may survive, but it will be under pressure continuously. It's meeting its objectives but it's not efficiently doing so. The best possible outcome is, of course, when it's effective and efficient. Uh, this will succeed and grow. That business will succeed and grow. Now, in an effective business, well, the company is ineffective if it's not achieving its, its objectives. It may need to reconsider its strategy. Effectiveness is a measure of the ability of the business to achieve its strategic goals. That's what we mean by effectiveness. Effective but inefficient, well, in this case the business objective and goals are achieved but resources are underutilized. It's inefficient. It's not using its resources efficiently. The outcomes could have been achieved with greater economy and use of resources. Now, effective and efficient. This is, in this case, the business meets its objectives and it's cost effective in producing the goods. Higher performing companies are efficient and effective in their aims. So, higher performing businesses um, meet their objectives efficiently they are effective and efficient. The, these companies have a clear strategy 
they have a good set of, of achievable goals and objectives they optimize their use of resources now overall management considerations well first of all what is the required level of output the appropriate technology needed to produce the output so the management must look at what is the required level of output what's the the technology that it needs what resources has it got available what distribution and logistics are needed can it distribute by lorry or by van or by rail or does it need to use air transport or um, does it need warehousing does it need warehousing in different parts of the country or in different countries or so it needs to work that out it needs to have a monitoring and control system to ensure that the targets are met it must continuously look at uh, its own internal systems and monitor those systems to ensure that they're meeting the required targets so measuring and performance is an ongoing activity it's not a one-off it should be factored into the routines of the business it requires effective monitoring and there must be some sort of benchmarking to say when it's falling short of the set targets and at what point do the there's a shortfall trigger intervention and action on the part of management so that's all we need to say about uh, measuring performance uh, there are quite a few ideas in here and many of them are the subject matter of separate videos for example economies and diseconomies of scale so I suggest you look at those and do some general reading in the area also that's all we're going to do for the moment so thank you for watching